In the previous video, we had an introduction to the normal distribution. We saw that if we know the mean and the standard deviation of a normally distributed set of data, then we can label a bell curve. And if the values fall nicely on these standard deviation lines, so if I wanted to look at an observation that was two standard deviations away, I could calculate percentages that lie below and above that quite easily. At the end of the video, we saw that we could calculate the z-score, which was an observation that wasn't exactly necessarily on a standard deviation line. So what we want to be able to do, remember, with these bell curves, is if we are given a normal distribution, if we're given a bell curve, we know the mean's going to be in the middle, what we want to be able to do is to maybe find the area or the percent of observations that would lie above a certain amount. So let's call that x. So in the previous problem we had 10 as our mean and maybe we want to know what observations lie above 16 and this was the number of correct answers on an exam. I think 11 was the mean, I'm sorry. Okay. So actually no, it was 10. But regardless, what we're trying to figure out is what percent of observations, if we know the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is let's say 4, what percent of observations lie above 16? So notice what I've done here is, is I have drawn a picture. <clears throat> if we need to calculate the area or the percent associated with an observation, the first thing we're going to want to do is draw a picture. After that, we're going to want to use the standard deviation and the mean to calculate, in this example, how far or what's the z-score associated with our observation. After that, we are going, and this is not a step, but it's just reminding us what the z-score is. It's telling us that that's how many standard deviations away we are. And then what we can use is that z-score chart. And a z-score chart is something that allows me to convert between a z-score, so it can convert between a z-score, and if I look up a z-score on the chart, so if I look on the chart, it's going to give me the percent or the area to the left. And when I say to the left, I'm referring to the left of that z-score. It can actually go the other way as well. So if we know the percentage, we know the area to the left, we can look on the chart and that will give us the z-score associated with that. <clears throat> so it seems like a lot of information, but let's, let's try one out here. So average heights of adult males is 69 inches and a standard deviation of 2.8. Sam is 74 inches tall. We want to know what percent of people is Sam taller than. Always draw a picture. I can't stress that enough. And in this example, we have a bell curve. And in the middle, we know is our mean. So we're told that the mean is 69. And the standard deviation is 2.8. So on my bell curve, I know in the middle is the value of 69 inches. What I'm looking for is the percent of people that are, or what percent of people are shorter than Sam. We want to know what percent of people is Sam taller than. That means he's going to be taller than these people. These people are going to be shorter than him. So Sam's observation lies at 74. He's 74 inches tall. So if I were to label Sam's height on this bell curve, 74 would be over here. So I'm going to mark that right here, 74. And what I want to know is what percent of people is he taller than. So I'm looking for this area. I am looking for the area or the percent to the left of this 74. <clears throat> what I've done is just gone ahead and drawn a picture. And I labeled the mean. And I labeled the standard deviation on the, up here. And I also labeled the observation that I'm looking for, 74. What I need to do now is to figure out a z-score associated with 74. In other words, how many standard deviations away is 74? That's the next step. So what we can do is, well, first of all, let's figure out how far is 74 away from the mean. And so I'll take 74, I'll subtract the mean of 69, and then I'll divide by the standard deviation of 2.8. The general formula, once again, is the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And that's going to give us the z-score. 
it's going to normalize it associated with the standard normal curve and it's going to allow us to figure out how many standard deviations away is this. So just subtracting the numerators I get 5 or subtracting the values in the numerator I get 5 and the denominator I get 2.8. So if you take 5 and divide it by 2.8 what we get is, and I'm going to write this number out, 1.7857 dot dot dot. And what we're going to round this to, we're going to round this to approximately the hundredths, we're going to round it to the hundredths place. So this will be approximately 1.7, that'll make this 1.79. So what I'm told here is that the observation of 74 has a z score a z score of 1.79 so the z score is approximately 1.79 so what i need to do is to look up a z score of 1.79 on the chart so on the chart let's look up a positive z score of 1.79 now if you don't have a z score chart you could just google it um, if you are in my class, then I have provided one to you. So here's the z-score chart. What we're looking for is a positive z-score. Over on this left-hand column here, we're going to be going down until we get to 1.7, which is this blue, col this blue row here. And we're going to go over, so this is the, the units place and the tenths place, and then we're going to go over until we get to 0.09. And once we go down, so 1.7, go all the way over to 0.09, we get a z-score of 0.9633. So on the chart, we got, with a z-score of 1.79, we got 0.9633, which is a relative frequency that is associated with a percentage of 96.33%. 96.33%. So once again, and that's, we completed these last two steps. I drew the picture, knowing what the mean was, and thinking about what observation I'm looking for. I found the z-score associated with that observation, and used the chart to find the area to the left. Now notice, I want this area to the left. The z-score chart will always give you the area to the left. So it turns out if, we're, if we were looking for the percent of people who are taller than Sam, then we would actually have to consider something else, which we'll see on that, this next example coming up. Here's another example. We're told we want to suppose that pulse rates are approximately normally distributed and they have a mean of 79 and a standard deviation of 10. So immediately I'm just going to label that. The mean is 79. They're normally distributed with a standard deviation of 10. Our first question is, what percent of people have a pulse rate less than 90? So let's draw the picture. I can't stress that enough. Let's draw the picture. We know we can mark our mean in the middle, which is 79. And we're also going to mark the observation we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for 90, a pulse rate of 90. And specifically, am I looking for the area to the left or to the right? Do I want to know the people, the percent less than 90 or greater than 90? Well, according to this, I'm looking for the percent of people less than 90, or that have a pulse rate less than 90. So I'm looking for this area. I am looking for the percent less than 90. So I need to find a z-score. I need to find a z-score that's associated with this observation. So I know the formula is my observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's going to be giving us our z-score of how far away in terms of standard deviations is this observation of 90. So I'll take 90 minus 79 and I'm going to divide by the standard deviation which is 10. When you plug this into your calculator you should get this would be 11. 11 divided by 10 is 1.1. So on the z-score chart, so on the chart, so on the chart let's look up a positive z-score of 1.1. 1.1. So here's our z-score chart. Here's 1.1, and we're going to go over to 1.10. We need a hundredths. The hundredths column is going to have 0, 0, or just a 0 in it. 
So we'll go all the way down to 1.10. We get 0.8643. We got an area of 0.8643. Keeping in mind, the z-score chart always gives us the area to the left. This is the area to the left, or in this case, if we wanted to convert to percentage, it gives us the percentage to the left. Now, is that what we want? Do we want the percentage to the left of this z-score? We do. If we look back to our picture, that's what we were looking for. We were looking for the area to the left. So that means I can write this as 86.43% and I'm good to go. That is the percent of individuals who would have a pulse rate less than 90. For the next problem, let's approach it the same way. And If you want to try this, you're welcome to pause the video and try it. But what percent of people have a pulse rate greater than 70? This is a little bit different than what we've seen. Well, let's draw the picture. I know 79 is in the middle, and the observation I am looking for in this case is 70, which is to the left. So here's 70. I'm also looking for the percent of people that have a pulse rate greater than 70. So it turns out I'm looking for this area. I'm looking for this area. Well, I still need to find a z-score. I still need to find a z-score associated with 70. So let's plug that in. 70 minus 79 divided by the standard deviation, which is 10. And when you plug that into your calculator, if you need a calculator, you should get 0 0.9. Negative 0 0.9. So this negative sign, all of the z-scores we've seen so far have been positive. If the z-score is negative, all that's telling you is that the observation is to the left. It's less than the mean. If it's positive, it's greater than the mean. But if a z-score is negative, it's less than the mean, which we've already seen just by our picture. So when you look up on the z-score chart, when you look up the z-score chart, I'm just going to abbreviate this z-chart, when you look this value up of negative 0.9, let's see what we get. So here, these are the positive z-scores. If we go to the other page, um, we want negative 0 0.9. So negative 0 0.9 is right here. 0 0.1841, 1841. So 0 0.1841. Now don't lose track of what this is telling us. What this is telling us is this is the area to the left the z-score chart always tells you to the area to the left. So 0.81, excuse me, 0.1841, or if we wrote that as 18.41%, that's the area to the left of this observation. That's the area here. The z-score chart that we use always gives you the area to the left. Now I want to caution you because some z-score charts give you the area between the observation and the mean. Some give you the area to the right. But the z-score chart that I have instructed you to use and, and I have printed and provided you always gives you the area to the left. So this z-score of negative 0.9, when we look up that value, get 18.41%. That's the area to the left. What we'll need to do, if we want the area to the right, and that's what I was indicating by my picture. We want the area or the percent above 70. So what I need to do is to take this 18.41% and I need to subtract it from 100%. And that should make sense. I mean, if, let me try this again. 100 minus 18.41%. And that should make sense because if, I mean, we know the area under the entire curve is 100. So if 18.41 is to the left, then the remaining is going to lie to the right. So when you subtract those, you should get 81.59. So if 18.41% lies to the left, then 81.59 is above. We have one more problem. This one's a little bit more complicated. Because now what we want to be able to do is if we know, according to WebMD, a normal resting pulse in beats per minute is between 80 and 100. What percent of adults 
over 11 years old have a normal pulse rate. In other words, if we know the mean is right in the, oops, that should be in the middle. If we know the mean is 79, what we want to know is what percent have a pulse rate between 80 and 100. So I want to look up the area between these values. I want to know the area between the z-scores of 80 and 100. So what we're going to need to do is actually find the z-scores for both of these. So what is the z-score associated with the observation of 100? What is the z-score associated with an observation of 80? So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and find those, please do. But I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. 100 minus the mean is 79 divided by the standard deviation, which was 10. This z-score is going to be 2.1. That's the z-score associated with 100 is 2.1. The z-score associated with 80, 80 minus 79 divided by 10, you're going to get a z-score of 0, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So when you look up these values on the chart, what do we get? So here on this step, we're going to be looking at this up on the chart. When we look this value up on the chart. So let's do 2.1 first. So for 2.1, positive 2.1, we get 0.9821. So this is 0 0.9821, 0 0.9821, which is associated with a 98.21%. When we look up 0 0.1, let's see what we get. 0 0.1, 0 0.5398, 0 0.5398, which is associated with 53.98%. Now, don't lose track of what these values are telling you. If you look up 98.21%, if we're referring to the chart and the picture that we drew, what we just found is there are, in terms of percentages, a percent of observations below 100, the observation of 100. This entire area here is 98.21%. So everything less than 100 is 91.21. When you looked up the z-score of 0 0.1 associated with the observation of 80, what we found is this part right here in red. We found the area 53.98. So 53.98 is in red. So in green is 98.21%. In red, we had 53.98. But what we want is this blue part right here in between. So you can take that and you can find that by subtracting these values. So by taking 98.21%, and subtracting away the 53.98, what do we get? So 98.21, when we subtract away 53.98, you should get 44.23%. So when you're asked to find the area in between, we have to do a little subtraction. Think about the area to the left of 80 and to the left of 100. And then when you subtract those percentages, you're going to get the area that is in between those observations.